In this example, we're going to do a hypothesis test of two populations for a proportion. This question says, test the claim that headaches occur at a faster rate in the treatment group than for those that are not in the treatment group. And we're going to use a 0.01 .01 level of significance. And the first population we can call the treatment group. And we see the sample size is 734 people. And 117 of those, or x sub 1, is or had a headache. In the second population, we can call that the placebo group. There were 725 people in that study, and 29 of those people had a headache. Now, in order to conduct a hypothesis test, we have to first identify the given values in symbolic form. Now, all the values that we have so far is N1, or the sample size of the treatment group, is 734. X sub 1 is 117. All of the subscripts denote which population it's from. P hat 1, which is the uh, proportion of people who experienced a headache, was 117 over 307, uh, 734, which is approximately 0.16. Q hat, or those who did not experience a headache, was the complement of 1 minus P hat, or 1 minus 117 over 734 which will get 617 over 734, or approximately 0.84. In the second population, we'll just call that with a subscript 2, that tells us the second population, or the placebo group, and we have 725 people in that, in, sampled in that group. And out of those, 29 people experienced a headache for a sample proportion of 29 over 725, or 0.04. And we can figure out the complement of that, or those who did not experience a headache, is 1 minus p hat sub 2, which is 1 minus 0 0.04 or 0.96. And we know the level of significance we're told is 0.01 in the question. Now the question asks us to test the claim that headaches occur at a faster rate in the treatment group. So the treatment group, the headaches occur at a faster rate than in the placebo group. So the population of the treatment group is proportion is greater than the population of those who experience the headache in the placebo group. Since we do not have equality in here, we'll have to put the claim in the alternative hypothesis. And then the opposite of that is the null hypothesis, or P1 is less than or equal to P2. We could subtract P2 from both sides, and we'll get the null hypothesis as P1 minus P2 less than or equal to 0. We do the same thing on the alternative, just subtracting P2 from both sides. We'll get P1 minus P2 is greater than 0. In step number 3, we want to calculate our test statistic, which is for a two-population proportion, we'll have z equals P1 hat minus P2 hat in parentheses, minus the difference in the population proportions, which is P1 minus P2. This is going to be obtained from the numerical value or the hypothesized value of the null hypothesis. In this case, this will be 0. And then we'll divide by the square root of p bar times q bar over n1 plus p bar times q bar over n2. Filling in all of that information, we have to first calculate p bar, which is just x bar 1 plus x bar 2 over n1 plus n2. So we have 117 plus 29 divided by 734 plus 725. We'll get 146 over 1,459, or p bar is 0.10. q bar is just going to be the complement of that, of 1 minus p bar, or 1 minus 0.1 is 0 0.90. Filling in all the information that we have so far, we'll have p hat 1, which is 117 over 734. P hat 2 is 29 over 725, so we'll take the difference. P1 minus P2 is obtained from the null hypothesis. The hypothesized value, or the number, is 0. And then we're going to divide by P bar, which is 0.1. Q bar is 0.9, divided by 734. Plus, P bar is 0.1, Q bar is 0.9, and N2 is 725. Simplifying everything down in the numerator, we'll get 0 0.11940045. In the denominator, we'll get 0 0.01570837. And simplifying down, we'll get 7.60. That is our test statistic. Now in step number four, if we do the traditional approach, 
we'll calculate the rejection region. And to calculate the rejection region, we have to determine if this is a one or two tailed test. Based on the alternative, it's a one tailed test to the right because of the greater than sign. So we have a one tailed test to the right. We put all of our level of significance into that, which is 0.01. We use the body of the Z tables to tell us, look up 0.01 in the body of the table and you'll read off 2.33. So our rejection region should match what our picture says of z greater than 2.33. In step number five, we have to determine, does our test statistic of 7.60 lie in that rejection region? And yes, it does, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis because our test statistic, 7.60, lies in that rejection region. In step number six, we're going to restate what our statement was, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and then we have to determine whether there is or is not sufficient evidence. Since we're rejecting our null hypothesis, we're rejecting that, so therefore we're really supporting our claim. So then we can say there is sufficient evidence at the 0.01 level of significance to suggest that headaches occur at a faster rate in the treatment group than for those that are not in the treatment group. Just restating what the claim says. Now we could have done the p-value approach, we would have still had to do the first three steps. They are, uh, they are identical. In the p-value approach, we have to determine what the p-value is. So step number four would be to determine what the p-value is. We put in our test statistic of 7.60. It's a one-sided test to the right because of the alternative. So we shade in that region, and we look up in our tables using a z-value of 7.60, what is the probability? And you'll read 0 .0001. So the p-value is equal to 0 .0001. And we're going to reject the null hypothesis in step number five because the p-value is less than or equal to our level of significance of alpha because 0 .0001 is less than 0 .01. So therefore, in step number six, we restate what we had said in the traditional approach. They should be the same. Uh, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and there is sufficient evidence at the 0.01 level of significance to suggest that headaches occur at a faster rate in the treatment group than for those not in the treatment group.